Hi and welcome back to our Calix Sustainable Aquaculture series. We hope you enjoyed our first four episodes and it is great to have you back for more. In this series, we explore different aspects of aquaculture and define key characteristics of a more sustainable approach to aquaculture. Sustainable aquaculture is possible with the right mindset and innovative technologies. Today, we will be looking at seafood processing. We will introduce a sister product to AquaCal Plus, ActiMag, which is specifically used for industrial wastewater treatment. Global production of fish and seafood has quadrupled over the past 50 years. Not only has the world population more than doubled over this period, the average person now eats almost twice as much seafood as half a century ago. One innovation has helped to alleviate some of the pressures on wild fish catch. Aquaculture, the practice of fish and seafood farming. But large-scale aquaculture can have significant environmental consequences. Among many seafood-related environmental issues, two categories stand out. The industry's water footprint and pollution caused by aquaculture and processing. Seafood processing produces environmental impacts both in terms of water use and the volume and type of wastewater generated. Impacts vary by the type of operation and which products are being processed. Generally, effluent from seafood processing is heavily laden with nitrogen, proteins and micronutrients. With legislation in place in most producing countries, this polluted waste must be treated before discharge to avoid contamination of the water ecosystems. As you can see from this graph, aquaculture will continue to expand exponentially worldwide, particularly in China. This means more seafood to process and more waste to treat. It is projected that we will see large increases in aquaculture production worldwide over the next decade, while wild catch will potentially decline. This means we will see increasing quantities of seafood needing to be processed. This in turn will increase the quantities of waste effluent needing to be handled properly. This table shows waste produced from various forms of seafood processing. As you can see, both the wastewater generated and the environmental impacts vary with the volume and variety of seafood being processed. Generally, effluent from seafood processing is heavily laden with nitrogen, proteins and micronutrients, which are all potential sources of contamination if discharged into receiving water bodies without adequate treatment. Most large processing facilities use chemical treatments to meet discharge limits. Yet care must be taken in introducing chemicals in aquaculture systems to reduce chemical residues in effluents. Using chemical treatment is relatively fast and efficient. But there are quite a few downsides. First, the large amount of chemicals needed. Second, the cost. And third, the amount of energy needed for the treatment process. The high volume of sludge produced. The safety challenges linked with some of these chemicals. Odour issues. The level of costly monitoring required. And finally, the environmental impacts of some of these chemicals are still difficult to assess and may result in dramatic consequences for our ecosystems. A high consumption of chemicals usually means a high volume of sludge produced.
chemically treated wastewater sludge can contain polyaluminium chloride, also known as PAC, which is toxic, has to be removed and cannot be landfilled. If PAC is used, sludge has to be disposed of as a scheduled waste. The discharge of solid sludge is costly as it requires special storage and handling to comply with disposal authorities. If allowed to accumulate, ammonia is toxic to fish and other living species and can be detrimental to any water bodies. This is why aeration is also needed for aerobic digestion due to the high levels of ammonia contained in the effluent, which even the most efficient water treatment chemicals cannot reduce. High aeration means high consumption of electricity, which means high operating costs. Aerators often need to be used 24-7 to be effective. An open system when treating wastewater means odours are released usually causing complaints and disturbance in the surrounding neighbourhood. Bad odours in the food industry vary in type and strength as they can be created during production, processing and during wastewater treatment. Seafood processing can generate some really strong odours, usually a lot more pronounced than other kinds of food and drink processing. Seafood processing issues also include high suspended solids or SS, high chemical oxygen demand, COD, high fats and oils, FOG, which can lead to pipe blockage, and high ammonia. Let's look at a wastewater plant cogeneration system where a biogas is produced and converted into heat or electricity for use at the plant or for conversion into additional revenue. In anaerobic cogeneration systems, COD can be reduced by up to 90%. Additional revenue from biogas production can also be used to offset processing costs. Finally, because the system is closed, odour is not an issue. I will now show you a case study from the anaerobic cogeneration at a piggery of a similar size and with the type of organic loading that you would encounter in a seafood processing plant. As you can see here, Actimag was dosed as an additive in the balancing pond early in the process. The orange line on this graph shows how Actimag increased the biogas production by 30% on average. And this table shows the increase in methane content of the biogas generated when dosing Actimag in the system. Adopting Actimag in a cogeneration system can increase the revenue generated from the production of biogas, a renewable resource of energy that can be converted into heat or electricity. This is because the biogas produced can be utilised to generate electricity that can be used to run the plant or can be sold to the local authority for additional income. In this case, we've seen a 20% increase in the profits generated from the biogas-fed power generation. So, not only are you improving the performance of your system, you are also making money while thinking about the Earth. But that's not the end of the story. Using Actimag can also improve digestion, as the system works better and faster to treat the wastewater. Because of the rapid breakdown of COD, Actimag can also help reduce the amount of electricity needed by the anaerobic system to meet discharge standards. Actimag also reduces odours. The main reason for this is that free ammonia is not produced in the process. Harmful chemicals like PAC are no longer needed 
which translates into significant reduction of sludge volumes, handling and disposal costs. Actimag breaks down fat oils and greases, usually referred to as fogs, and prevents pipe blockage. It can also reduce phosphate in the discharge if this is a concern. So, in summary, introducing Actimag in an anaerobic cogeneration system can reduce operating costs as well as reduce harmful discharges. For more information on Calix's Actimag or for detailed protocols, please contact our partners and distributors in your region. For Malaysia, Vietnam and Thailand, contact Maha Chemicals. For China, Taiwan and Indonesia, contact Honlex Jones. For India, contact Three Little Fishes. With passion and a purpose of solving global challenges, Calix is developing solutions for aquaculture that safely works to reduce the likelihood of disease, improves productivity and ultimately your profitability. A more sustainable industry means aquaculture and shrimp farming can become a more efficient way of growing food and feed the protein needs of a growing human population. Because, as we like to say here at Calix, there's only one Earth and it's already ours. Mars is for quitters. Thanks for your attention. We hope you found this video interesting and I hope you'll join me again for the next episode of this series on sustainable aquaculture. To find out how Calix can help improve the sustainability of shrimp farming practices, visit our website www.calix.global